This is um, a, a follow-up lecture to Model Rule 3.5, um, Integrity and Decorum of Tribunal. And we've been talking about access to jurors and how you're absolutely not allowed to talk, to, uh, to talk with jurors or make friends with jurors during a case. Um, you can talk to them subject to certain limitations after the case is over and try to get information about like tips that you could improve or what you're doing well and so forth. There's a recent ABA ethics opinion um, about social media, con um, stalking jurors on social media that I wanna draw your attention to because I, they could ask you about this on the MPRE. This was, came out in 2014 and it's ABA formal opinion 466. Um, and basic, the bottom line is when you have jurors or prospective jurors, you are allowed to um, observe their postings um, and presence on social media. You may, a lawyer may review a juror's or potential juror's internet presence, which may include postings by the juror or potential juror in advance of or during a trial, but you may not commun communicate directly th or, th um, or through another with a juror or potential juror. So you, uh, you can, if they have a public Facebook page, you can look at their Facebook page, the stuff they put on Twitter or Pinterest or um, uh, uh, other social media accounts like that. And um, if they have a blog or their own personal website, you can go and read their blog. You are not allowed to start posting comments or and, get, and say, oh, I totally agree. Or um, what a cute picture of your dog. Do, do not have any, any two-way communication or post comments or replies or like their pictures or something like that. You may not, either personally or through another, send an access request to a juror's uh, electronic social media. And so if, there, if it's only, if it's not uh, available for the public to see their posts, then you can't ask, you can't send a friend request um, to a juror so that you can review their um, stuff on social media. Nor can you have somebody like a, a, a law student intern or a secretary or someone like that who's not a lawyer um, uh, do it for you. Um, so you can't ask a juror for information that you have not that they have not made public, um, because that will count as an ex parte communication under 3.5. Now, what if it's one of these social media sites where the juror can tell who has looked at their page, uh, who has reviewed it? Now, and um, I'm not as whiz about all of the forms of social media. My understanding is on Facebook and Twitter, I can't tell who has read my posts. But on LinkedIn, I can tell who has looked at my profile page. And, um, and so if you go to somebody's LinkedIn page to kind of get an idea of where they work and stuff like that in their work history and education history, that's a pretty good idea. That's pretty smart, right, for a lawyer to do. That's okay. And it's okay even though LinkedIn tells them who has viewed their profile recently. We don't care that they know that the lawyers are among the everyone else in the world who can look at their profile. So that does not con constitute um, a, a violation of 3.5 the same way that sending them a friend request does. If while you're reviewing their social media stuff, you re realize that they're engaged in um, criminal or fraudulent misconduct, for example, they are um, discussing the, tri the, the private jury deliberations on social media or something like that, or getting feedback from uh, outside evidence from people about the trial they're watching, those that's juror misconduct, and then you have to um, report it to the tribunal. So watch out. Um, you stalking the jurors on social media could end up if you see something that's um, juror misconduct, you're then going to have a duty to a duty to report them. Okay, that's it for that ABA ethics opinion, and that also wraps up our discussion of 3.5.